It's time for Inside the Patch with your Las Vegas Raiders. Here's Gnarly Charlie. Inside the Patch with Professional Football's Ultimate Fan Association. Hey, hey, Did I get it right? Did I get it right? It's Crim Raider. What's going on, man? Oh, man. Another, another wonderful night, man. Just uh, living the dream out here in Oregon. Yeah. Well, let's just pull the Band-Aid off. Let's talk about the game that we didn't win, but we won, but we didn't win. What happened? Monday night. You know, there's, there's a lot of goods and, and bads to take from that game. And, uh, you know, one thing that's kind of stuck with me on, that, on the ending of that game is obviously the collision between Adams and Renfro at the end of that game. and arguably two of the greatest uh two of the best route runners in the nfl somehow there was a miscommunication between one of them one of them with Carr. we're not sure who i don't think we'll ever know truly who but just i think a lot of it boiled down to that last play because we had right. the opportunity to win it right there i mean I, some experts today were saying that it's probably Adams because, and that's why he was so upset at the end of the game. And, but he was kind of forced, he was supposed to kind of get deep and he was forced to kind of come in and, and, you know, and, and I just don't want Renfro to be responsible for losing two games now. since so he's been back. So, <laughs> so, it's like, yeah. so what I've heard is that, that Adams was supposed to run a go route and right. he ended up cutting inside. He was blocked a little bit by a defender. And so he started making a move inside just unfortunately, you know, collided with Renfro. I mean, I've never seen that happen before. I've never seen two receivers hit each other like that. Especially in that crucial of a situation. You know, you there's times that I've seen it happen, but the camera's focused elsewhere because the ball doesn't go to them. Right. It goes somewhere else. Well, I mean, I've been saying this all day. You know, we, we're four plays away from being undefeated this season. And, you know, it's, it's really that close. And it's like – and it's frustrating – I keep feeling like, you know what, though, if we can make our way to the playoffs, if we can get in the playoffs, then it's all for naught and it doesn't matter. It's a whole new whole new life. And that's kind of what we got to think about. I mean, coming out of the bye week, we got three games that we should realistically win, the Texans, the Saints, and the Jaguars. Right. So, you know, we can easily be three, game, three more wins ahead and be sit, sitting second in our division because – Chiefs have a little little bit of a rough schedule coming up. Not that with Mahomes magic, that guy just right. does some stupid plays that work out for him. So who knows? But well, we can realistically be in second place in our division, I think. We have a horrendous de- December, but that but you know what though? It doesn't matter. That's that's the way you get to the Super Bowl. You got to go through these teams anyway at some point. So absolutely. Well, and you know, I my biggest fear is is that three-game run of people we should beat. You know, I'm like, those tend to be the ones that we have trouble with, you know? Yep. Well, that's that's why I was optimistic about the Chiefs game because always, every, for years now, the games that everybody just – they already count us out, those yep. are the games we win for some reason. And right. then we go into the games that we're supposed to win, and we go in there lackluster, you know, we got this, and we lose. We're, we're up 14 nothing, and I'm still nervous, and I'm going, man – I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. And, and there it is. And I had friends messaging me like, man, I knew it. This is your guys this week. The chiefs are exposed, man. Just, just shut up. Like oh, it's yeah. way too early. Don't ever say that. Look at the bills last year against the chiefs, 13 seconds for them to get knocked out. I mean, the game was, was Carlson was there to win the game for us. And it's just, uh, I, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to just, get past it because there's no, I wish they had that alternate ending, like in a movie. Like, <laughs> can we do a, a different ending? Uh, I mean, just like, Oh my gosh. Well, it's like you said, we're four plays away from being undefeated. That one catch Devonte Adams on the sideline. Yep. That puts us in Daniel Carlson range right there. Yeah. And then we would be trying to do some fourth down crap, you know? So What's your opinion on the two-point conversion? Do you think it's a good move, bad move? When it happened, everybody was flipping out in my living room. And I said, I don't hate it. I, I It shows me that he has confidence in his line. Josh has been running good all day. 
And and who wants to go overtime with Mahomes in Arrowhead? You know what I mean? I, I, I was sent that, but the defense was playing pretty good. But I, I don't know. I I didn't want to argue because there's nothing I can do. He never called me and asked me what I thought. <laughs> so so I was like, ah, I don't know. I just I didn't understand it. With four and a half minutes left, you know, if we were inside the two point or the the two minute warning, I understand it a little more. It just right has me confused with that much time left on the clock, and what's the difference between being tied and being up one? Either way, Chiefs still need a field goal. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing, man. I, I I was shocked for one, and then I said, but you know, let's say we would have made it, and then you know. Who knows? Oh, yeah. And that's, that's the greatest I mean, call ever. That's why me and you were sitting here talking about it, and they're over there making the millions of dollars to make those <laughs> exactly. <plays. laughs> it's almost like that. Do you call timeout when it's three seconds left to ice the kicker? You know, does that help? Yeah, right. No, and it goes through trends warming up all game. Yeah. You know, I did see a, a, an article on it was an interview with Mac uh, Hollins. Mm-hmm. He's what he went on the set of, of Good Morning Football with no shoes on. And he's walking around New York with no shoes on. And they're just giving him crap. And it's he's just that guy. He's just so you know, me, me and Brian know we're talking earlier about maybe he could become you know, they used to have barefoot kickers. What about a barefoot wide receiver? <laughs> Can you imagine the very so first one? Foot stepped on one time. <laughs> I guess that would end. You got turf toe you got to deal with or whatever, or just, <laughs> yeah, just all kinds of toe issues. No argument about dragging toe, though. <laughs> yeah. Either does or doesn't. Get that finger, that toenail real long. <laughs> it give you an advantage. Right. Uh, but, but, but he's, a, you know what? He's a cool guy, and I didn't know that much about him. And, and just seeing that he's got that cool vibe. He works for the Special Olympics, and he's a real give back person. He reads. I, I just, I was impressed. You know, I'll have to look that video up. I didn't see any of that. I'd really be interested because I, I mean, the kid came out of nowhere. Renfro yeah. goes down and this Mac Hollins guy just comes out of nowhere and just starts all of a sudden he's the, he's <laughs> the go-to guy when Adam's discovered. Well, it's his, it's his sixth year though. He, he did play for Miami last year and he played for the, um, the Eagles, but he just said, you know, it's, it's the progression he's been doing this. And, and I just, I liked his vibe. I just liked the way he comes across and he's, you know, but you can't really be barefoot in the desert. So I don't know if that will work, in Las Vegas. <laughs> but, but I just, you know, he scuba dives. I, he's, he's, I'm kind of rude for this guy now. And he even said, look, man, they got two guys on Devonte, two guys on Waller. He goes, I'm that guy. I'm, I'm that, I'm just the extra guy. And so we got to get Waller back out there before we can get two guys on him. Oh my gosh. That hamstring all year. Yeah. But all right. So moving forward, um, we don't play this week, but Devontae Adams gets his, his jersey retired at Fresno State at Valley Children's Hospital uh stadium, that former Bulldog Stadium. And I'm excited about that coming to town and get past all that crap of the pushing stuff. And you know, that's just dumb. That's all the news has been all week. Anything with the NFL has been Devontae Adams this week. Yeah. Put the Raiders back in that spotlight, just like last year. Well, did, did you see there was an amusement park in Kansas City that, that banned uh, Devontae Adams for life? <laughs> it's, it's like some dumb amusement park he would never go to. They were just right. going to get some publicity. But I thought that was kind of funny. Taking yeah. advantage of it while they can. Yeah. Get All right, so Texans in two weeks. How do you feel about that? Uh, I, it's like we said earlier, never comfortable. We, we look at that game and it should be an easy dub, easy. But those are the games that we take advantage, take for granted. Yeah. And Davis Mills hasn't had that big breakout game that everyone was kind of expecting him to have. I had high hopes preseason for Nico Collins and he hasn't done anything yet. So I think it's a matter of time before these guys start having their, you know, their, that breakout game. I just hope it's not against us because on paper we should have it with no problem. Well, you know, in, in the NFL, you know, these these guys are the best of the best. I heard a conversation with Derek Carr and Hunter Renfro, and Renfro was saying that Clemson, when he played, they could beat the worst team in the NFL. And Carr just laughed because the worst team in the NFL 
would kill Clemson. He goes, would destroy them. And, and I think he's right. I mean, it's a whole nother level. Okay. It, it yeah. I mean, how many team, how many players from each team get drafted each year? You know, exactly. Ohio State, you, you know, LSU, Alabama, they get a few, but other than that, 95, 98% of them don't get drafted at all. Most of these guys were the best ones on their team growing up since they were a kid, and they've never not started. And you know what I mean? And to get to the pros, and it's a whole other every, – everyone's good. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's crazy to think about. All right, what, what's next for you as far as fandom? What's going on over there? Um, well, I fly – I will be going to the Saints game and to the Jacksonville game. Uh, spending two weeks on the road with the wife and cruising around the, the country for those two games. Oh, well, that's great. Um, I actually have a charity event that I'm putting on tomorrow night. It's a charity disc golf tournament that I'm putting on for a local charity rock and rooms that I like love doing stuff with this year. And so just kind of this year, honestly, I've been kind of low key. I haven't right, been doing right. a lot. I've been focusing a lot more on family and stuff at home. And well, well Grim. I'm telling you, if you ever have something like an auction or anything, you want to do something like that, you're always welcome. People people love your collection behind you. I get emails on that all the time. Grim's got it going on over there. I mean, so that's cool. It's it's a work in progress. It's ever changing. So at, at some point, are you going to have the full Raider house? Not just a room. Is it going to be the house? Well, I've already, me and the wife already decided when I change the siding on the house, it's going to be gray siding with black trim. <laughs> so That's it, when, man. When that day comes. All right. Well, perfect. Well, we, we make the playoffs. You could probably maybe get some silver and gray uh, lawn going too. I'm sure you can do that. Yeah. Well, when we make the playoffs, it's wintertime here. We got snow on the ground. So maybe an off season silver and gray. Well, maybe. Well, life. make a snow angel. Make a snow angel Raider emblem. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna put that challenge out there. I think you can. Yeah, <laughs> I want to see. I want to see the the Snow Raider emblem. So that's perfect. Well, hey man, I'm excited, dude. Um, we'll talk to you soon. Once again, it's Grim Raider. Thanks, brother. Hey, thank you, Charlie. We'll be back with more inside the patch on 1430 ESPN, your official home of the Las Vegas Raiders.